a great pleasure. We've got uh, some of the bridge crew of the old Discovery joining us today. And I'm going to introduce them in no particular order. Please welcome to the stage Emily Coop, Sarah Mitchin, Rebecca Sharma. Oh, you know, sorry. Oh, you know, the day. so nice to finally have you guys uh, not in Toronto for a minute. Right. Uh, I assume you're in the midst right now of shooting things that may or may not be happening. We can't really discuss, but I want to discuss how it feels for you guys to be at this convention now. This is now... Last year it was before we saw anything. This year we all now see you guys on the Discovery. How does it feel to be back? And how does this feel with all these snapping pictures and confusement? Um, I'll start. <laughs> this is my first con ever. Yeah! So thank you! Um, it's been incredible. Uh, thank you so much, all of you, for coming, for saying hello, for being here, for snapping and all the flashing and all of that. But it's so incredible because on social media we get to interact with you in some capacity, but this has been next level. This has yeah. really been incredible. And a lot of you have come up to me and said, welcome to the family. Um, and that means everything. And I feel part of the family and part of the community now. Yeah. And this just made it, just this just solidified everything. So thank you. Yes, very Thanks. fun to have you. And it's nice you don't have to, you have your hair is out. Yeah, like look, it's my face. <laughs> Uh, so I want to talk to everybody, just sort of, who was here last year? Were any of you guys here last year? I'm a veteran. You're a veteran. This my second year. So I'm, you know, I'm a Star Trek Las Vegas veteran. I'm just going to say that. But what is your, so, Sam, what is your advice to your fellow castmates who are not veterans? What, what are you saying to them as someone who's tried and true, died in the wolf, been to Star Trek Las Vegas? Sure, guys. What is your advice? Okay. These are the greatest fans in the world. <laughs> I, I, I haven't had a, a single encounter with one of you that wasn't special and uh, really touching in some way. One woman did try to kill me the other day, though. That's a downside. She tried to, she tried to see a real-life Connor death. She tried to run me over with her scooter. Uh, if, if you're here, don't worry. I'm, 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 I'm on the line. I, I like that you have had the benefit of being killed in both um, universes. Like, and that people now feel like they could kill you anywhere they see you. Yeah. <laughs> but guys, just be cool. Please don't. <laughs> uh, so, let me start with sort of your... You know, Discovery's interesting in the fact that we're not following... On the previous iterations of Star Trek, it's always like you're following the senior officers around. You know everything about the chief engineer and you know, the head of ops, and so on and so forth, but on Discovery, we seem to be following a lot of characters that aren't necessarily, you know, the heads of stations. So, like, you guys are just, you're sitting there running the ship. Oh, yeah. And we're rarely getting to have any input from you guys. Uh, what, for you, well, first of all, what, do you guys know what your ranking position is? Because they never say it. Go. Because I would love to know that, just as a nerd. Please. Ella, go. Yeah. Lieutenant. Lieutenant. And wait, hang on. What is your technical position on the ship? Con officer. Con officer, okay. Lieutenant commander. Ooh, I'll rank to you. No, sorry. No. Um, <laughs> and I'm the spore drives ops officer. Spore drive ops. That is a unique position to the discovery. It is. Yes. <laughs> well, right, you were the chief of security. Yes, I was chief of security and commander. Yeah, yeah. you outranked everybody, and then basically you made it hard. I'm going to correct you there. I think I outrank everybody. <laughs> oh, Captain oh yes, I, uh, Shenzhou. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> a little wild. That was All right, way to rub it in. Way to rub it in. Thank you very much. <laughs> 
Winner of it. Thank this you. This is the discovery. Still not over. Oh, all right. You, you had a halfway decent run. <laughs> no dissing of the Shenzhou. I uh, and are you? Lieutenant Junior Gray. Oh, nice. I'm climbing. And you're ops. Op yeah, you're the ops officer. That I get, mostly because you're in the right position. <laughs> Uh, and then Sam, you were, what was your position on the Shenzhou? Uh, Ens Ensign Connor. I was Ensign right. Bambi Connor, and then Captain uh, Connor for a very short time. Thanks for the reminder again. Thank you. Ensign, you, you got promoted almost as fast as Kirk in 2009 Star Trek. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a, they get it, guys, don't worry. <laughs> Starfleet Academy, Captain of the Enterprise. It was a good time. Uh, <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. Bada bang. Now, what does it feel like for you guys when you're sitting around on the bridge? Are, the, are, the, are your favorite days the bridge scenes where you're all just around? Most of our days are the bridge scenes. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they're super fun. When Jonathan Frakes was directing, he was like, oh, it reminds me of the good old days, back on the bridge shenanigans. And that's kind of what it is. You just get so deliriously tired eventually that you start, start singing, dancing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Saru gets his long legs up there in the captain's chair. And, sure. You know, it's a good old time. Do you ever find it like, because you guys have to be engaged, because a lot of times the dialogue is just happening over your shoulder or whatever, so you have to be acting each time they're doing a take, and you're just, you're not, you don't have to say anything. Do you find it to be particularly exhausting? Do you try to do anything with your, like, do you have, like, fun games that you play with yourself or with castmates where you try to keep yourself awake? Um, I just know for myself, like, what my buttons are. I made... You do? I, like, made it up in my mind, and I was like, okay, when it's black alert, I'm gonna hit these three buttons, and I'm gonna hold, like, the little thing uh -huh. But if we're doing a certain thing, then I'm going to do it the other way. So then, <laughs> oh, I try to like create these weird games because there, there's a lot of automated things. Yeah. But I like to get it at the exact time so it makes me think that I'm actually doing it. <laughs> I've seen her. And then I'm like, there's like numbers that roll, but they stop at weird places, like 177. And I'm like, okay, I'm like, oh, wait, 177, okay, when I, I'm going to tap it when it gets to 177, so I have to like remember it, you know. <laughs> Mind game. Well, you <laughs> sort of, the <laughs> you really, you really, a little OCD, a little like you know boredom. <laughs> See, I that you play that you you play your part like I play slot machines. Like I know that the button I hit is not going to actually do anything. <laughs> it's, all, it's all a random number generator. I'm like, pretending that if I wave my hand over the reels, I'll hit a jackpot. It's never happened. Uh, <laughs> so I think we have we have audience questions over to my right. No, there's a yes. Hello, how are you? Oh, there's there's people. There's people. Oh, okay. In the darkness. Oh, I just want to ask. Yes. What is, what is it like to be the next Shatners? To be the next Nicole's? To be the next Mulgrew? To be the next uh, McFadden? What is it like to be in that position? Oh my God, you're wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> wow, that's a great question. So guys, I would, yeah, each uh, what is it like to be? You're now in the fraternity. You're here, and you will be in Las Vegas every year until we're all dead. <laughs> I just said this to a few people backstage. I I got the job. And I'm like, oh my gosh, cool Star Trek. And I'm like, did did you walk into work the first day? And I get to the bridge, and I'm like, oh my gosh, wow. The weight of everything really set in when you walk onto the bridge. It's a really special place, and. And meeting Sinequa, she's like, we're doing this! I'm like, ah, okay! It was so thrilling and exciting, and I think we're all just like, very, very happy to be able to be a part of it all. Yeah. I, um, first of all, this is my first ever gig on Fell, or TV. Yeah. Yeah. And it's Star Trek. Um, there is a lot of I feel a lot of pressure, a lot of, a little bit, and I think I put that on myself because I got the job at first not knowing it was Star Trek, um, which makes sense. Yeah. Code names. Code names. <laughs> Lots of them. Um, and then I got the job and came on set, didn't know what it meant to like act in front of a camera and all of these things, but the support and the family dynamic that was on set just welcomed me. 
and now the pressure that I once felt is no longer there. It's actually there's a huge desire to um, to, to to give back. That's family, right? Yeah. That's what we have on the show. And for me, you know, I, I many of you know me from the other sci-fi families that I've been a part of. And, um, it's incredible. I'm like, how is this possible? You know, I have some people who are like, what? Just you got to do Star Wars next, and then that's it. You've done it all. Um, and it did occur to me recently. You know, I, I looked at we were doing a Battlestar reunion in Germany. And I looked at everyone and I thought, one day we're all going to come to these things and like, some of the fans will have died. And, and I'll have died. This is dark. I don't know why. Whoa. <laughs> uh, but like, it's okay. Our game is near a near universe, so keep it dark. Right, right. Uh, we are all going to like meet each other for years to come. We're going we're gonna to watch each other get families and grow old. and. And we're going to say bye to people, we're going to say hello to new people. I mean, this is really, we're going to be doing this for a long time. And you're all here with us. Love it. We're all connected in the mycelium network that is Star Trek fandom. Yes. Uh, Mushrooms unite. Thank you. I made that up just now. Guys, you can use it. Hello on the left question. Hello. Rika, Sam, Onion, Sarah, Emily, thank you so much for taking time on your schedules to come and visit us here. And we're so looking forward to season two. Uh, Rika, I gotta ask you this, and I should have asked you this. Yes, it is. Hello. I have to ask you this, because I've been re-watching Discovery as much as I can for these panels, and I gotta ask you, what the frick was your character thinking letting down that force field and letting that creature slaughter you? Was that in the script? Or did it just happen? I just improvised that. No, of course it's in the script! No, no, she winked it and then they went and CG animated her improvisation with yeah. a tardigrade. They were like, that's a great choice. <laughs> no! Expensive choice, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, you know, it was... It, what they were exploring, which you know may not have been totally clear, but it, there was a scene that was cut that showed my very complicated relationship with Lorca, and and uh, basically he had me wrapped around his little finger, and things were getting very very intense, and I was going to do whatever I had to do to make my captain happy, and to do what I could do to try and save my people. I know from the point of view of the entire story and, and the, what you guys are tracking, of course it was a terrible decision. But you know how when you think you have a good idea but you kind of got like narrow tunnel vision because you're so scared and you make terrible decisions because you're in your own little world? That's, that's what Lanker did. In my humble opinion. I think it's an informed opinion and probably correct. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you for your question, sir. Uh, hello, Miss. How are you? And uh, welcome. Please ask your question. Great. Hi, everyone. Um, first off, can you please tell me about your audition processes and what that was all like so that you landed this awesome job? And my second question, Miss Sharma, you've got to talk about Battlestar just a just to hear about Battlestar. That is hair of Battlestar. Because we were talking, you know, Frakes, Jonathan Frakes yesterday was discussing how he had to audition seven times to finally get the part of Riker. So I wonder if you guys, how often did you have to audition? How tedious was the process? My process was very simple. I had one audition because I was, I, unbeknownst to me, I was auditioning for the Shenzhou Bridge Crew. Um, and so I auditioned months before, and I was in Morocco on vacation, and my agent called, and he's like, Star Trek, uh, just called. And I was like, cool, and then I got the script, and I'm like, why am I the bridge on the Shenzhou? Is it called Star Trek Discovery? I'm gonna die, like <laughs> Sam. Uh, and then luckily, I didn't know this was happening until, until a little bit later that I was getting carried on to the Discovery, which I'm... Very grateful. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I'm just going to say for any actors out there who do self tapes, um, there is hope because I pulled this job off of a self tape. 
So that was interesting and uh, kind of, uh, it gave me hope for every other self-tape I do. Uh, so, so it was all of the self-tape and then uh, I, I Skyped with uh, Orla Sidowitz, the casting director, and David Semmel, our uh, pilot director. And I uh, found out like two days later that I pulled it and my head exploded. Sam, how, how, how did you frame it when you were self-taping? Did you go three quarters or full body? Oh, always oh, three quarters, man. Okay. Because I had to pull out my phaser, so they had to see that, you know what I'm saying? Look, I, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. If any of you are actually actors out there and you want to book it, I work on the Goldberg on ABC and we stare at tapes. Thank you, one guy. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Adam F. Goldberg. <laughs> uh, no, uh, but uh, we, we watch tapes auditions all the time in the writer's room, and sometimes people are just, it's their face. And I'm just like, no, I get it, but also no. But anyway, that's good advice. So Sam did it right. Uh, Rika, how, how, what was your, how many auditions did you have to do? I, I just did the one self-tape, also. And how? 24 hours later, got a phone call, pack your bags. The crew, the crew of TNG's gonna be real mad at you guys. They had to go through, like, I think... Patrick... It is super easy to <laughs> I mean, it wasn't easy. Our, our audition sites came like, if you press this button, it will self-destruct. <laughs> like, you're not allowed to print them, yeah. you know, you're not even allowed to know it's Star Trek. Like, it's they took my driver's license at my audition. Did they really? Yeah, I was like, what? what? I auditioned for the part of John Smith. It was so stealth, they didn't even <laughs> let me know who it was. You make a, you're a great John Smith. Why, well, thank you. Uh, okay, <laughs> how, what was your process like? Self-tape. Wow! <laughs> this is very impressive! I actually, funny, well not funny, I, um, I was a heavy theater um, person in, in Toronto, as stage actor, and I was, I think I was just ready to like be done with it, and so I left, I told my agent I'm done with acting, and she said, just do this last audition, this one audition, I didn't know it was Star Trek. And um, two days after she sent in the tape, she said, they want you, and here I am. It wow. gives me goosebumps every time you tell that story. I just, I love that so much. Thank you so much for your question. Uh, and on the left, sir. Hello, uh, my question is for Sam, but anyone else can weigh in, in on it too, if they like. Uh, but, um, sir, it was on uh, Matt Mira's After Trek show, but I think you said um, that uh, Michelle Yeoh is quote unquote a force to be reckoned with, and I was intrigued by that, and I was wondering what you meant by uh, you know a force to be reckoned with. Well, she's Michelle Yeoh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep this nice and short. Um, no, seriously, she she just off from from day one, her and Sonequa were it was like like Michelle was mother hen, and then. Cynic was just waiting for her to die so she could become Mother Hen. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, no, man, she was just odd. Like, you know, we, we, we went out for, for dinner once and, you know, she tried to get us, you know, she tried to bond with us and we were all going to die, so that was really nice. But <laughs> what, 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 <laughs> um, this but, tastes uh, dark. <laughs> yeah. It's very dark. Um, but, you know, when the director yells action, uh, she was right there. She was on it, and um, so that uh, I like to be with professional people just because I haven't been doing this that long, and I, I like people to lead by example um, for everyone else. And uh, especially when you're on when you're on Star Trek, it helps with your captain is a freaking badass. So, uh, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. She randomly throws some like seriously high kicks on the bridge too. Yeah. It's very cool. She probably just likes to keep loose. Yeah. Fucking you Michelle Yeoh. Yeah. You just Casual. turn the corner and she's gonna just face kick you. But it's part of the process and she's awesome. And in those uniforms, it's not that easy. <laughs> I couldn't raise my arms. <laughs> but she's got her leg like by her ear. She's Michelle Yeoh. She's a force to be reckoned with. Your question, how are you? Hello, thank you for coming. I really enjoyed the show and when we first started, um, I didn't know any of you really, and but as the show progressed, I, I got used to seeing you on the bridge. Except for Sarah, I'm glad to see your face. <laughs> and uh, so now you're you're just really part of the show now. And um, I was wondering, well, this is basically for Sarah. What do you think of the makeup process? Oh, that's a good question, Sarah. How long does it take you? Uh, they've got it down to like just over two hours. 
still a lot of time to sit down. Yeah. You uh, yeah. But I mean, I'm the one that like just sits there while they do like magic. So really, you know, and I get to drink my coffee through a straw. And they always make sure I have something solid to eat Very before nice. I get into it. Um, I think the makeup's phenomenal. Uh, the whole process. I've never done anything like this before. I've never done prosthetics, not for Halloween, not for anything. Um, Doug Jones. Uh, he was the one that kind of took me under his wing because, as probably all of you know, he is king. Um, and it, you know, it took some time getting used to and just how everything works. And I had a lot of questions because I like to ask questions and they always answer them. And James and Hugo and Chris and Shane, everybody at the group who does it is just so professional and great that they take the best care of me. Thank you. Oh, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, sir, we have a question on the left. Yeah, you said you, um, the bridge crews always seem to end up having a lot of, as you said, shenanigans. So we'd like to hear who's the prankster and a, a couple stories of a prank or two. Anyone pulling pranks on the set of the disco guys? I don't think it's pranks as much as it is just singing and dancing. A lot of singing. Who is the spearheader of the, who spearheads the singing? Doug Jones. <laughs> He's going to get his own show. <laughs> how, how far into the process was it like week, week one, day one, that he decided that I'm just going to sing whenever I feel like Was it like day two? Like, what, like, what, it's really day two? It was like, yeah, yeah. It, it, 2019, uh, Doug Jones coming to Las Vegas and doing all his Star Trek Discovery routines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're here to, uh, so tomorrow, Doug, uh, Doug will be up here with Zaniqua, and I'm sure there will be a song or two to be had. So you guys are just, you guys are singers and dancers, not so much pranking. Yes. You know what that means. The spot is open to become the prankster for the discovery. <laughs> so if anyone needs any help with that... I hold yeah. auditions that by self-tape. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for your question. Hello. Hello. I've been asking this of every actor I've gotten a chance nice with this to this panel, and your guys' an autograph of journey Jones. with the franchise may be yeah. shorter than some of the others, but it's still certainly just as valuable. So I'd love to hear what is the most valuable lesson you've learned through your experience with the franchise so far. You can barely see anything on there. Yeah, it's a good question. Is it about the fandom? Is it about the responsibility of the... Um, yeah. For me, for me, it's a responsibility uh, aspect because it just same thing. I mean, when I booked it, I was like, okay, Star Trek, Star Trek. Like, okay, um, and I mean, like, I'm first generation Canadian, so like, I grew up on shows like Franco Botskita, which is Serbian, and not so much English shows. So Star Trek, I mean, obviously, I've heard about it, I've seen, but I had I haven't seen nearly as much as I've seen. Now, you know what I mean? So I was like, whoa! And I think what Moyen was saying, I mean, uh, a bit of fear yeah. because of that responsibility and the weight, and I think my responsibility to all of you and to the rest of this family, that's the biggest thing that has kind of opened my eyes since yeah. this all started. I mean, being up here right now, like that, every, every part of it. Yeah, it, it does carry responsibility, and, and we all, as, as fans, I'll speak as a fan, how I got the job, I'm a fan. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's just, I, we immensely, we all appreciate everything you guys do up there. And uh, we live vicariously through you. We all want to know what happens at 177, too. Yeah. I want to hit that button someday. Just to jump on, just to jump on um, the responsibility thing, I, uh, when reading the script, it's, you feel such a connection to it that there are times, the longer you do it, the longer you are set, and the more you spend time with the family, and the more you spend time with the script each episode, on some level you're forced to try to be a better human being, because the show demands that of you as an actor. Then you go away and you're like, oh shit, sorry. Um, <laughs> I have to live up to this. I know it's 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 TV, it's fictional, but I want to be a better person. And I say these lines, and I hear people say these lines, and then we go, we wrap up for 12 hours or something, and you forget about it. But there's something that remains the next day, and you're on some level forced to try to be a better person. And Star Trek does that. Yeah. Yeah, something sort of 
talk that a little bit is something I've really learned is um, what kind of actor I want to be. Uh, growing up, wanting to be an actor, you know, you want that lead role and you want those things. And I'm very grateful that I haven't had that yet because I, I didn't meet Sinequa. And the way she runs set as a leading woman is one of the greatest gifts to get to watch and to aspire to be someday. Um, she brings us all together with grace, with creativity, with joy, and she has a family, and she's, um, she organizes games nights, she does everything, um, and I'm just uh, very happy that I got to watch that first. Yeah. So if my opportunity arises, I can fist pump every single person before our first take of the day, yeah. without fail. You know, those little things that make everyone feel like, okay, we're going to get through this day, and we're going to carry this massive thing along. Yeah, it's, I mean, the importance of who, whoever's number one on that call sheet, the importance of their um, sort of example for the rest of the cast and the crew, all the way down, it's, it's, it can't be uh, stated how important that is, and it's so That's nice to hear that Sinequa is just out there. Sinequa is queen. She <laughs> is, she is, and yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll jump on that bandwagon as well as the most valuable thing I've learned from being a part of this production, and I am very, very lucky I, having uh, Edward James almost as number one yeah. in the whole yeah. for the greatest portion of my career, my career. career. Um, but to have a woman of color wow. as a woman of color show me how she does it. Um, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I mean, I can't do Edward James almost. <laughs> no one can. I'm, no. Just, I'm just gonna jump in. I, I don't have very fond memories of Sinequa. Um, <laughs> I have no idea what, what these fine women are talking about, but I have zero really fond memories of Sinequa. I don't want to be in an elevator with her. <laughs> she texted me today, she said, come out to dinner. I said, no. So, just listen to them, but just have that in the back of your mind. Yeah. You see them in the yeah, Just guys, be careful. If the door opens and it's only Sinequa, let it go. Here. Just wait. <laughs> She's got Vulcan techniques. Thank you. Uh, so we have a question on the left. Yeah, I've got a quick question for Emily. I noticed your character has a prosthetic on her side. I'm just wondering, is that like a Borg implant or something? Or is that something that you're, they developed for your character? Or? Yeah, it's, a, it's an original, it's not a Borg piece. Um, you guys will learn more about that soon. Oh. I don't know. I actually know. But I, I, it will be explored a little bit more, because I know there's not a ton of information on it right now. But I always assumed you just got straight bucked up on the, on the Shenzhen. Yeah, it's a yeah. healing. And then they were like, oh, we've got to put her eye back together. Yeah. And let's st staple this to her face, and yeah. it's going to work out fine. That's always just what I thought. <laughs> this is a casual viewer. <laughs> That's pretty much it. But I, like that, like, I hope it's like going to give you headaches and you got to get a new one. Anyway, I'm not a writer yet on that show. Uh, over here, yes. Hello. Great shirt, by the way. Thank you. Um, I had a question for Oyen on this. Um, for me, it's incredibly wonderful to see so many women on the bridge, to see so many women of color, and to see so many women with natural hair. Um, yeah. <laughs> and was there any fight for for this? I don't know if you had any anything when they were bringing the character to say this is this is the look that you go for. It's just you. And <laughs> well, um, actually, I came on. This is a, a bit funny. I came. I had my slides shaved prior to me getting this job, and I came on set and realized Emily had her slides shaved. Um, but because I had my sides shaved and I had my hair twisted, I think they went with that look. Um, they tried to accom accommodate us. It wasn't, there was no fight whatsoever. I was, I was willing to do whatever. If you wanted to shave my head, in fact, I wanted them to shave my head. Uh, <laughs> if you wanted to shave my head, I'm willing to, to do that. But uh, it, was, it was easy. It was, uh, yeah. Did that, did that answer your question? Okay. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Question over here. Hi, I was wondering if you could confirm something. Uh, I don't know if you know what. Uh, Shazad is here on the side signing autographs. Oh, <laughs> so, hi. Um, and he said that uh, of the crew, he was the best dancer. Oh. Uh, that is 
127. And I'm wondering uh, if you can confirm that. 127. I don't know about dancing, but we were shooting recently, and he pretended to jump out the front window of the bridge. <laughs> that was pretty crazy. He was like, yeah, see ya, and just ran towards it. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, He's going to be fine. <laughs> yeah. We actually, the, drop. This, this, this crew actually go out a lot. We have fun a lot. So I can say yes, she's always a good dancer. Really a good dancer. Does anyone give him a run for his money? Is there anyone who's like the number two? Oh, I think it's very good. Oh, I am. I, I, I can't she can bust it. <laughs> <laughs> that is a true modesty. Right? I feel like you might be the best dancer in the class. Uh, thank you for that question. And over here, hello. Hi, how you doing? After Trek is great. Oh, okay. Here's my question for the folks from the panel. When you guys, do you get the scripts weeks in advance or just the week before? Good question. When are you getting them? Yeah, more like a week, or like a, you know, week or two before. Yeah. And how did you feel when you saw Pike saying, when Pike calling at the end of the episode? What were your responses? Oh! <laughs> They were, you were surprised, right? Yeah. yeah, I was surprised. I had access, I could have watched ahead on After Trek, like, because our production staff needed to get clips ready and things like that, so we would have a couple of weeks ahead of Discovery. We had scripts, and I always said to everybody on the crew, I said, don't tell me a word. I'm watching it beforehand, because I can't keep my mouth shut. And I would have been like, dudes. <laughs> The Enterprise just showed up, and then I would have lost all of our jobs. Uh, okay, sir, on the left. I wondered what the feeling was on set during Saru's We Are Starfleet speech. Oh, yes. It was, uh, for me, it was incredible uh, as well. It was like goosebumps. Even you just saying it now, it's like I get goosebumps. Like, it was just, it was a great speech, and I think a very relevant speech, um, and I think it moved. A lot of people, that's why you remember it. Yeah. I know watching it, it was like what I had been waiting to hear on that show was finally just this like clear, uh, just saying of oh, this is what Starfleet is. And it gave me goosebumps. And I watched it on a tiny laptop. Yeah. It was nice as a crew too, we usually work on the bridge. It was a bonding moment because it was off the bridge and we were, you know, we were dealing with something together and I think it really brought us together as a crew on and off screen yeah. um, a little bit, so it was, it was a really nice moment. Yeah, and it's always, I'm always so fascinated by Doug's ability to emote through latex, and just, he yeah. can convey so much with just his eyelids, and it's just like, yeah, and just the head turn, and, and having him deliver this, I, he's, a, he's gonna be a great captain someday. Yes. You know, I just, yes, thank you. Doug Jones is probably the one clapping out there. <laughs> He's gonna be, I, I'm looking forward to more, Saru. Uh, another question over here, sir. How are you? Uh, this year we are celebrating the 25th anniversary of Deep Space Nine, and one of the things that made that show amazing was a very well-developed group of secondary and recurring characters that were amazing over the course of the whole series. So my question is to those of you who aren't yet dead, uh, <laughs> and without giving any spoilers for season two, can we possibly hope to see more backstory for the supporting characters and you guys so that we can find out more about you on the show? That's, uh, look, this is going to be a very delicate question to answer, but I think without giving anything away, Maybe just a head nod or so. Are we going to find more uh, out about your characters? Yes. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Good. How much? In what details? In a long time. Here we go. Great. Thank you so much, sir. And over here we have another question. I think I have a time for. Yeah, we got two more. Go ahead. Hi, guys. Thanks for being here today. Um, I'm from Toronto myself, and I just want to ask you guys, unrelated to Star Trek, what's your favorite place to go out in the city? Rocket Horse. But it's a country bar. I'm a country girl. That is my favorite place, hands down. If you like country music and if you like to dance to country music and like all that good stuff. I love Canadian country music. Just 
me? No, it is. No, it's not. Yeah, are you guys sing at boot horses and stuff? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I genuinely love, I love Canada, I'm on record as saying that, and I think Toronto is one of my favorite cities in the world, and I like to, here's how you describe Toronto to anyone who's never been there, okay? Think of Gotham City if Batman was good at his job. <laughs> Are you guys like, oh my god, Matt pissed off Batman? <laughs> uh, thanks, one guy. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Can you tell me if you were Trek fans before you got these holes? Oh, that's a good question. I, I thought so. Uh, and I think I said this last year. I thought I was a fan before I came here. And then you guys made me feel like I know nothing. That's right. <laughs> we are inclusive here in the Star Trek fandom. You can no, no, know I, I or all of it. Good like, you guys are really knowledgeable. And now I feel like I have a... <laughs> <laughs> it's not in the theater. It's like, really, you guys don't like me. All right. <laughs> I think they're Team Sadipo over there. Uh, uh, did you, any, Regan, did you know anything about Trek? I mean, you were off in Battlestar Land, which in its, in its own right is this amazing sci-fi franchise. Did you have no time to consume? When I was about in grade four, I was Say. Canadian, she says yeah. grade four. Or I love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or three. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, my big brother one day said, Why are you watching that? Uh, Full House or something, I don't know. And, uh, and he said, I got a cool show for you to watch. And he put it on a TOS rerun. Uh huh. And he said, Okay, I know it's kind of cheesy and it's old, but it's really cool, I promise. And I said, okay, okay, and he kind of talked me into it, and he was like, you see those doors right there? I was like, yeah. He's like, there's two guys on either side pulling them open and close. I was like, what? <laughs> and that was what sold me for some reason. That's your name to start I was like, what? No. But the sound. He's like, yeah, they do that afterwards. What? <laughs> Every day, after school, I would come home, and I would eat milk and cookies. And I'm going to cry. I would watch TOS reruns. And for a little brown girl in a super white neighborhood in Canada, it was the first thing that gave me hope for a future where Everyone could be equal, and it didn't matter what you looked like, or what you spoke, or who you loved, or any of that. So yeah, I'm a fan. <laughs> Anybody else? No, yeah, I guess, yeah. We all have said if we're fans, we were fans prior. Well, I wasn't, but now I have a Star Trek watch. So now I am a fan. <laughs> mates, thank you so much for your question, and I believe you guys. You guys ready? All right, let's hear it, everybody, for the bridge crew of the Star Oh, wait, no, what did I miss one? Because I would. Oh, I are you guys wait, you gotta dance! Oh yeah, you do have to dance. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for everybody.